Howdy boys and girls, I am Chris Kiefer. Welcome to RacerXOnline.com and what you're staring at right here, 2022 edition of the KTM 350 SXF. Now, before you get all stoked and all happy, 2022 doesn't boast well for a lot of changes in our motocross world. For 2022, the KTM has been unchanged for the most part. We have a blue seat, we have an orange frame, we have some BNGs, but everything else remains the same. That's including the valving and the fork and the shock. Engine is the same, so not a lot of new things to tell you about on the 350 front, but that doesn't mean we're not gonna create some content and give you some different outlooks on what this bike's about. So today, we're at Glen Helen Raceway, and what we're gonna do is grab a couple different types of riders to see the burning question out there is a 350, the perfect size machine. Lots of emails my way, it's all over the message boards and even when I'm at the track, they say, hey Kiefer, is a 350 the right bike for me? So we're gonna break all that down, dive really deep. We're gonna do a deep dive of this bike and the size of this machine. 350 cc's, is it the right, is it the right bike for you? Stay tuned, find out. We'll be right back with some opinions and some facts. All right, so what we like to do here sometimes, randomly, we'll just pick some guy out of the area. We're at Glen Helen today. And I saw a guy, his name is Guy Arnone, he's 51 years old, he was on a YZ450F 2021 edition. And we started talking and I was like, you know what, you'd be a great candidate to ride this bike. So he has never been on one, correct? No, never. And uh, I said, hey, go ride a little bit, because he was complaining that maybe the Yamaha is a little bit too much for him. So, Guy, you just got off this machine and you said, I might have screwed you up, because now you might want another bike. So. Tell everybody out there why this bike could be best for you. So coming off my YZ, which is an incredible bike, um, as I just continue to get older and the stamina and the strength that I try and have, this bike has enough power, the weight is incredible, the handling is incredible, and I had ridden a 250F Yamaha, just did a test day a little bit, and it just was to uh, just need a little bit more I needed more because of my weight and my size so I just never really thought of this and when I just rode it it was incredible I was able to go longer I was able to control it and sometimes towards the end of a race certainly end of the day end of a long moto that 450 is a lot right so the point of riding dirt bikes people is to have fun and to me I don't really care about dynos that much I'm I like the human dyno you're a human dyno you know what you like you know how fast you want a bike to go. You know what you can jump and what you can't jump. So overall, 350 has enough power for you. The sticky part about this bike is the air fork, but we just talked about that a little bit, and you said you don't mind it. No, not at all, because uh, overall and all the handling and, again, different speeds and what is your agenda, where do you ride, and if you just want to have fun, if you want to be out there, stay in shape. It's the best exercise. And rekindling that love and that fun of riding this is a great bike for bigger vet guys versus the other alternatives. And you gotta choose, if, do I wanna jump that, do I wanna jump that? And to just have the fun and just stay in shape, this is incredible. There you have it. Random guy at Glen Helen, loves the KTM 350. So, so far, 350 could be the perfect size machine. Stay tuned, we got two more opinions coming up. All right, to the left of me, Kenny Day, 150 pounds. He's had the pleasure of riding the 2021 KTM 350 for me uh, for quite a while. He went back east and road, out here and road, so he had a wide spectrum on this bike, so he's very familiar with it. We brought him in again to uh, give you guys an opinion on the smaller guy scale. Um, the last rider that you saw, Guy, he was 195 pounds, so a little bit lighter rider, a little bit shorter guy here. 
Um, I like to call them my little Bilbo Baggins. So, <laughs> little, uh, little Bilbo, how are we doing? And uh, tell us about the 350 and give us some positives and maybe a couple of negatives because not everything's all uh, rainbows and cotton candy, right? Yeah, that's very accurate. So like Chris said, I actually had quite a bit of time last year on the 350. I rode in California, I rode in Florida, I uh, tried to get like a good, you know, overall idea of if the thing was good here and if it was good in Florida, either way. So today jumping back on it, um, I actually haven't ridden a 350 in I'm gonna say five months now. So he has been riding an RMZ 250 and then a KX 450, so this is actually great. Yeah, correct. So I've, I've kind of gotten to do everything in the past couple of months. So jumping back on this, first thing wow this thing rips like it's it's so fast and it's so light and nimble and you just i really took it for granted i think when i had it for a little bit um ton of ton of power ton of torque and it revs forever like i could go in second gear or i could go in third either way i'm never going to hit like uh rev limit it never size off so i love that aspect of it um the things i'm going to give you one negative on it okay. the only negative i have about this bike and i it was the same whether I was in California or whether I was in Florida was I just struggle with air fork sometimes. Um, just struggle with overall being comfortable and it doesn't feel that planted. So yeah, what he said to me today while we were out there, you mentioned it just never feels like the front knobbies are digging in the terra firma, right? It's just always really light feeling. So that is something that the air fork, that's its character. So uh, for me, I'm the same way. I like a lot of lean angle traction. Spring fork gives me that. So that's one caveat for you on this bike yeah correct so that's my thing i always feel like my front end's kind of floating uh, and i ride over the front for the most part so i'm really putting a lot of trust on the front tire hooking up so that's my biggest thing it's just it's inconsistent you know i'm always a little hesitant and i never really realize how hesitant i am until i go get on a spring fork again and then it's like you know i can tell that there's You're like ah traction yeah traction and like oh crap i could be coming in so much faster but i'm just you know i'm a little concerned in the front end wash so the question we've been asking everybody here, Guy, you, and we'll talk to, to Matt here in a little bit, is the 350cc size. Uh, it's all over the message boards. Rhino's freaking out about it. And uh, so is the 350 size for you, 150 pounds, um, joy rider, soul rider, still very good rider. Like he could probably go race and qualify for a national, but he works for Fox now. So the enjoyment you get out of riding is this size the right size for you. Would you buy this bike with your own money? I would 100% buy this bike. So here's the thing is, in the past few months, I've ridden everything, the 250. I've ridden a 450. Jumping back on the 350 is, I know this is gonna sound crazy and people might like judge me for saying this, but the power on this is more usable than the 450. I've been riding a 450 and if I wanna be lazy and lug it, sure, but I, I struggle with the weight and some of those other things. So jumping on the 350 today, having that much power and like, how easy I was able to just bounce around the track. I prefer this all day over the 250 or the 450. Something that's different too, if you guys are familiar with the 450 and 350 is we talked about it. The 350 is a freer engine revving feel. A um, little bit more pep excitement than a 450 has like a tractor like pulling sensation. So yeah, if it's deep out here at Glen Helen, the 450 is like a tractor. It moves really fast from point A to point B. This moves fairly fast from point A to point B, but a little freer, a little lighter feeling, a little more peppier. So you like that freer uh, revving engine feel, yeah? Yeah, so like I've always kind of gravitated to a, a 250F because I, I like to be aggressive and I want to be able to have to carry my, my momentum, you know? Jump into a 450, you, you kind of don't have to. You could just kind of come into the turns and just set in and real easy get out of them because you've got that power where this is like the perfect in between. I can, I can still charge it like I'm on a 250F uh, and if I want to, I can stop in the turns and get on the gas and it pulls me out. It, feels stronger than, than the 450 most of the time. So I truly enjoy the power delivery of this bike and I think it works for everybody across the board. Uh, one thing I want to mention too that I talk about a lot is vibration on KTMs. I know you were just on a Japanese bike, the Kawasaki and the RM. Do you notice the vibration at all when you hop on this thing or just don't even notice it? Uh, a little, a little, but the things that like really stand out for me, especially at Glen Helen today, it, it's, it wasn't really bumpy, it was just kind of flat is that this chassis works so well on anything hard packed. Like it's phenomenal. You could, you know, find traction anywhere. That's the biggest thing. The vibration isn't like a, you know, a thing that would really hurt me. Deter you. Okay, so when I ride, when I ride these KTMs, especially the 350, I feel like I stand up more. 
for whatever reason. And I have no idea. And I, I presented that question to Kenny when he was riding his. And I'm like, do you feel like you stand up more in the corners when you're riding a steel frame bike and, and the KTM? And he actually said yes. So I was surprised because I thought I was the only one. But for whatever reason, the light weight or the way the power is delivered, I seem to stand up more on this. So you're the same way. I would agree. I do stand. You know, I think we all understand that standing kind of allows you to just point and shoot where you want to go. You know, sometimes sitting, that takes a whole bunch of effort to kind of sit into turns and foot out, all that kind of stuff. So standing uh, works really well, especially at a place like this where you can kind of go from left to right across the track. Um, the bike does feel a little bit smaller to me, and, I, and I'm small, like I'm, I'm a small stature. So standing, I feel tall on the bike, uh, and I can really just be light everywhere. So I think it does help. All right. Kenny Day, he said it. I got nothing else to say. On and on to the next rider, number three. Last rider, number three to the left of me, Matt Suravog. He helps me at Kiefer Inc. testing. He is like my average test guy. He's the blue collar guy, goes to work, nine, well, not even nine to five. It's like five to five, 12 hour days. And he just purchased one of these things. So he's the perfect example of why the 350 size could be the ultimate CC range, right? So 200 pounds, B rider, novice rider? B. B. Stiff as board, so if you guys are seeing this, these shots that you're watching right now, if he just looks like a kite, just stiff in the air, this is my guy right here. So you purchased a 2022 KTM 350. You ride a lot of my test bikes. Why did you make the decision to buy a 350? And you rode here today on your bike. It's barely new, you know, barely broke in. Uh, is it confirmed that this is the right decision for you? For me, it is. The more I ride this bike, the more I just fall in love. As much as I'd like to say I'm man enough for a 450, I'm not. And uh, it's just, it's not intimidating to ride. You know, it's got plenty of power when you need it, but yet it's not overbearing. And I tend to ride it a little more aggressively and charge a little harder into the corners with it than I would over, you know, riding a 450. The thing I get asked a lot about 350, 450 is, can I lug it? This guy to the left of me is the epitome of lugging. I try to force him to leave it in second gear. He will not do it. He will not do it. He will shift in the third. So if you guys are worried about lugging your bike in third gear, Vaj, tell them about what it does in third gear. You can lug it pretty well, but as Chris made me do today, you are uh, greatly rewarded if you just rev, rev the crap out of it. Yeah, so it does do both. So it's not going to lug as well as a 450, but it can do it. You can uh, adjust the gearing a little bit, go up one, two, do the Jody. You guys know what that's about. Um, that'll help you get into third gear quicker. Uh, if you guys prefer that style of riding, or you can kind of have some fun, retrain your brain. Don't shift so much and let this thing eat. So at Glen Helen here today, I told Matt, come out of the corner, just leave it in second all the way up, just so you can feel that it will pull that gear all the way up the hill. So that's the beauty about this engine. It's free revving, it can lug, it will rev out. And uh, map one, map two, map one is more of a linear pulling power. Map two has a little bit more of aggressive hit. Which guy are you? So right now, since I'm actually here early in the morning, map two, uh, when I come Thursday, 4.30, it's map one and sometimes even traction control. So 200 pounds, stock suspension obviously is soft. Uh, what are the mods that you plan on doing to get it to your weight? And again, I'm not a huge air fork guy, but WP has made a comfortable air fork for the working man here where he can adjust it and have a good time. So. Are you going to go to a spring fork? I guess that's my first question. Are you going to go to a spring fork or are we going to run air? As of right now, I'm leaving the air. My only plan as of now is to go up a uh, spring rate in the rear for my uh, girth I've got carrying on here. Yep. So, But the air fork's nice just because I can adjust it. If I have a day I'm really not feeling it and it's I think it's beating the crap out of me, I can get a little plushness by letting some air out. and It may blow, blow through a little bit, but I can kind of tailor it so the way I'm feeling that day is one reason I like the air fork, but at the same time, you know. It brings up a great, a great question for me is what he's feeling like each day. And it, it, trust me, it's, it's crazy. It could be great one day and then he's throwing his helmet the next. So uh, I feel like that's a lot of you guys out there. You have great days, you have some bad days. 
this bike kind of helps bridge that gap a little bit, I feel like. You won't be so uh, opposite of each. I think feel, I feel like the 350 size will kind of help you have better days than not so great days. Yeah, that's how I feel too, is that I'm able to, on my bad days, I can still push and feel like I accomplished some good riding that day. We're on a 450, if I'm tired after work, it's, it's pointless. I'm, I'm frustrated the whole time I'm on the track. Where the 350, it's more or less, I can ride it, it's not riding me. So my good days are really good, but my off days aren't near as bad. So you spent 10G on this thing, right? It's expensive. The dirt bikes are expensive, right, people? So are you happy with your purchase, knowing that, uh, hey, you're lining up on, at some races, maybe 100 cc's down from a lot of your guys, because obviously the vet class is an open class. You're okay with it? I'm perfectly fine with it. I'm actually excited to see if I do better at some of these races like Vet Nationals and the other ones we do every year, riding a 350. All right, guys. Well, that's three different riders. Very, uh, sheesh, man. You couldn't ask for different styles of riding, uh, abilities, um, sizes. So we have Guy, we have Matt, we have Kenny. I have ridden this thing. I will give you my quick opinion. Like for me, I'm still pretty competitive. I would like a 450. I've, I ride a lot so I can hang on to it. Um, if I wasn't riding a lot, I would love to have this bike. Some of the best times I've had are on a 250 and a 350 that are built. So a couple mods to this thing, a muffler, ECU, um, your bar spec, just those things right there make a huge difference. And man, it is a fun bike to ride. If you guys are worried about not having enough power, do not worry about it. It is uh, plentiful. I would like to say. So um, the KTM 350 SXF for 2022, like we mentioned, is unchanged, but it looks beautiful. I like the orange frame. Hopefully KTM seems to go that direction on the last year model. Hopefully they uh, stick with that. I don't think they will, but you never know. Um, so if you guys you can go check them out at your KTM dealers, or if you want more information at RacerX, just stay here, racerxonline.com for more tests, lifestyle stuff, racing. Don't forget to subscribe to the magazine. We're giving away a free pair of Ethica underwear. I mean, that's a $50 value, 30 bucks for 12 issues. Very cool. So go subscribe. There's still print out there. And we'll see you back again, probably at another track with another 2022. More information for you. We'll see you on the next go around.